My name is Dave Watkinson. I'm the Director of Quality and Compliance at the School of Health Sport and Bioscience and most of my teaching is on the podiatry course. It's really good because it's anonymous, so those students who aren't confident, it can help with them with their confidence. It allows everybody to engage, um, whereas when you're asking questions to the class, the confident students on the, the students who are up with their learning and understanding will tend to hog the answers, and the ones who are less confident will, will tend to be much sort of shy and they don't want to do that, whereas with Mentimeter, everybody gets a chance to answer questions. Um, you can also use it for them to do comments, so you can ask their opinion of something. You can ask them to, um, on, on the first lecture, I asked them as an icebreaker what they understood about physiology. I asked them what their science background was. Uh, I asked them what they thought made a good student, so they could put comments on. And usually at the end of the MCQs, we say, how do you think you've done? And you get, again, a load of comments that, that is often quite useful because you can tease things out of those comments. Somebody said today, I need to do a lot more reading. And we was able to discuss that and say, well, is it more reading you need to do? Is it more focused reading? So I think Mentimeter gives you a lot more um, ability to really engage the, the group with, with the learning. Um, I think it's also really good that because you're asking questions, they start to get to know what they don't know. So often they, they know what they do know, but they don't know what they don't know. And that, that's really useful to know because in, in the group work, you go around and say, are you OK? And they all say, yes, I'm OK. You then ask them some more questions, and it's, it's apparent that they're not OK. Uh, but Mentimeter starts to, to tell them that early because they, they're thinking, right, there was five questions and I couldn't answer any of them. But I thought I was OK. I thought I came into class and I'd done the reading and I'd watched a video and I thought I was doing OK. So I, I find it really useful. I, to, to, to engage with them like that. It's, it's certainly good for recap, so I usually do at the start of the session at least a couple of questions recapping over the previous session, and then at the end of the session again use it. I've used it within a lecture, so we have 20 minutes talking about something, and then you can use Mentimeter again just to see if they've understood what you're doing. somebody who would be very quick to answer and then after that you would get four or five students who would answer very quickly and they'd all pick the same one and you think okay yeah you're just following you're not actually answering you're just following it today because I've figured out that you can actually hide the answers they all have to answer and then you release the answers you suddenly realize or they suddenly realize that they can't do that it actually took longer to get through, but it gave you a much better outcome because you've got a much, more, a much bigger range of answers, whereas previously somebody would answer and everybody else would do the same answer. So that was more useful. So I think it's, it's understanding what Mentimeter can do and, and how you can use it. I have found it really useful that you don't just do, I don't just do the MCQ quiz and say, OK, answer A is correct, well done if you got that. We go through the answers and say why they're right or wrong and try and use them to get a group discussion going and use them to increase knowledge around the subject that we're talking. I think consider the questions carefully and, and the level that you're at. Sometimes it's easy to make the questions too easy, but it's also easy to, quite easy to make them too hard. Uh, and it's trying to find a balance so that the students have an understanding and so that you can use that as a discussion platform. Um, not to use too many. Um, again, if you are going to discuss around them, that takes time. So if you've got probably five or six questions, that can start to get into an hour's time. So thinking about how you're going to use them and where you're going to use them. You don't want them to be scared of it. You don't want them to be scared of saying, but I thought A would be right. Um, the whole point is not to say A was right, well done, let's move on, but why was A right? So often they'll say it's A or it's B, and the next question is always, OK, but why? And it's the why that's the, the most important bit. Um, and again, try to make it sort of comfortable and, and have a laugh and say, 
it doesn't actually matter if you get it wrong. What matters then is you realise that you've got it wrong and so you do something about that. that it's the next step that's the important bit. So it's anonymous, it's confidential, it's not summative, it's not going towards anything. It's for us to learn, for me to see how you're doing, for you to see how you're doing. <laughs>